Welcome to a special edition of Fringe Elements, out of the house in a special studio here with that SEC podcast, SEC Mike Bratton, SEC Mike on Twitter. Uh, I am Braden Gall. You can get to me on Twitter at Braden Gall. This is the SEC East over under edition. You've got over unders over there on every team in the SEC East. We're going to run through all the schedules. Um, we'll we'll pick some games. We'll talk about rosters. We'll talk about expectations. Um, and if you want the entire West edition of this, make sure you go check out that SEC podcast with Mike and myself. It's over on his feed at his YouTube page. Uh, tell everybody where they can find it. Yeah, thatsecpodcast.com or just search that SEC podcast available on every podcasting platform, YouTube, or search SEC Mike. I tweet constantly about SEC football. That's, that's the best way to find me. Yep, everybody knows about you, man. Uh, so everybody knows how to find you. So we appreciate it, of course, uh, for everybody hanging out. Rate, review, subscribe, share the show, all that great stuff. Um, and if you want the West, exact same conversation. Go, it's all on his feed, so you got to go over to his feed to check it out. So yeah. uh, you take over from here, man. All right, so now we're going to do Florida. We're going to start. So we're going to tell everybody what I kind of told everybody there what we're going to do, but go ahead and give give the rundown of what the goal is of this conversation. Yeah, so I just thought it would be a fun way to to set the over-unders. These are hypothetical over-unders, but, uh, you know, we, we follow SEC football like fanatics, so we have a good idea of where this over-under line is going to be at. So I, I feel like I'm pretty close to what I – this is my prediction of where Vegas will set these over-unders. Okay. For every team, we run down the schedule. I ask you, would you go over or under the hypothetical team win total? And again, in March, this is just regular season. Doesn't count SEC championship game. Doesn't count a bowl game. And then we're putting confidence level on on the over under. Okay, let me ask you a question first. Do you gamble? I oh yeah in the fall. Oh well, I I actually like, do. You actually put real money on like when everybody makes picks, right? We all make picks. Mm-hmm. We all talk about our bets. Yeah, but do you put money on those bets? I'll t- I'll be honest with you, Braden. You because you 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 kind of went different direction there. You said in the fall, football on football on college football games. I don't in the fall. Interesting. Where I bet is in the spring and summer. Oh, on, because I feel like I have a knowledge to where I know where the odds makers are making mistakes. Yeah, no, I agree with you. And I, then, I was talking games more. When but. the games start coming around, they're too good. I don't put money on it. No, no, it's funny you say that. I'm the same way. Like I have, I've won Georgia national championship bets in February mm-hmm. twice. I've had Georgia winning the national title the last two years, and I got my odds in February. Yeah, um, I agree. Like I got, I hammered LSU over. At when it was six, six and a half last year at, in like March. Mm-hmm. I think you're exactly right. Gambling, if you're listening to this show and Mike's show, <laughs> you have more information and knowledge about these teams than almost anybody at this stage of the year. So you're, I, I, that's actually a great point. I think now is the time. Now there's a portal window that's going to open and rosters are going to change. So it's, it's right. still there's still some risk involved. Um, I gamble on football games in the fall. But I don't, not much money. I don't, I, we're talking beer money. Like, I put a beer on each, on a game that I care about. Like, I don't, I, 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 I don't view it as a revenue stream. I view it as an entertainment. Right, so, right. Um, but that's why there's value in, in what we're doing right now. Because I agree. when Vegas comes out with their over under, they may, if they miss it by just a game is big. But if they miss it by two or three, the number we're talking easy about. Money, then. Yeah, exactly. I agree. So let's right. start with Florida. I'm going to run down the schedule real quick at Utah. Right out the Ooh. gate, tricky. McNeese State at home, week two. Tennessee at home. Charlotte at home. At Kentucky. Vanderbilt at home. At South Carolina. Georgia, of course, in Jacksonville. But you got two two weeks to prepare for that game. Uh, November 4th, Arkansas at home. At LSU. At Missouri. Florida State at home. Ooh. I'm setting the over/under for the Florida Gators. I can't believe I'm even saying this, Braden. Six. Oh, I think that's exactly right. I think they're I think they're a 500 football team. But usually the standard is oh no nine oh, yeah. ten you know yeah, yeah, yeah. eight and a half something like that. Uh, and Graham Mertz, of course, is is having the greatest spring in the history of Florida quarterbacks. Um, <laughs> spring practice reports are so dumb. Um, <laughs> I I believe in Billy Napier. I I think he's a, a good coach. Um, I believe in the structure he's built. I just think it's they're just not there yet at certain positions. Like the depth is just not there. Mm-hmm. Um, the quarterback, I, you know, Mertz might Mertz might have his best season. He was a big time recruit coming out of high school, played for three years in a in a bad offense. 
at Wisconsin. Um, never really got back to being as good as he was like in his first game, basically. Yeah. Um, but he's got some talent, and I think he'll be playing with in an offensive system that's better. I I just don't know where this roster is all altogether. They, you know, the youngest defensive coordinator in the history of the world. Um, <laughs> But God, does he talk like an SEC defensive <laughs> coordinator, um, Austin Armstrong? I like I like him, man. I think he's he's a fascinating hire because, uh, and I think you've said this like he he's either he's either going to be like the head coach at Auburn in three years or 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 out of a job forever. Like I don't, mm-hmm. and I kind of agree with that because. I, but you don't get this kind of gig at that age without being pretty talented. So right, I think I think they've got a lot of good building block foundational pieces, but I don't think the roster is there and. The schedule is like there's there's some there's more top fifteen teams on that schedule than people realize. Like Utah's preseason top fifteen, Tennessee's preseason probably top fifteen ish, Georgia number one, Florida State's top ten preseason. Like there, there is a lot of like South Carolina is going to be a revenge game for South Carolina. Mm-hmm. They got smoked by Florida last year. <laughs> a bad Florida team smoked a good South Carolina team, and now that game's in South in Columbia. I. The, the Tennessee game is interesting. They could get the balls. They could beat Tennessee in that game. And yeah. If they do, they probably hit the over. Um, but I think there's a baked in, almost guaranteed three or four losses. So I'll. It's a I'm bad gonna... time for Florida to start beefing up the non-conference. For you yeah. know, for 40 years they didn't do it. Now they've <laughs> now they've done it. Well, they've they've you know they always play good non-conference games. They just play them in Florida. They don't. Yeah, right, they, they right. Don't, like they've they've played Miami and they they also play Florida State every year, which is pretty big time for, mm-hmm. for the last 35 years. I, I just I, five and seven doesn't feel right, but seven and five doesn't either, um, which is what you're asking me. Replacing four <laughs> of five on the on the offensive line, Billy Napier yeah, wants to ground and pound it. I think they're a 500 football team. I think six and six is right. I think you put the number right on it. So uh, no confidence, yeah. zero confidence. But give me I, I guess the under, but I don't. Florida at five and seven. That didn't, how about this? Dan Mullen, if the 12 team playoff would have existed, Dan Mullen would have taken Florida to the playoff in his first three seasons. And people probably still would have been pissed. Yep. Th- think about what this 12 team playoff is going to do <laughs> to people's minds and to their expectations and to coaching careers. It is going to be fascinating. Think about that. Dan Mullen fired from Florida. But didn't Jim McElwain also go to back to back SEC title game? And now, then they that fired was, his ass. That too. was a function of the division, though. Yeah, like Florida almost beat Alabama under Dan Mullen in the SEC title game. Like it was not a poorly coached team, and that was an undefeated Alabama too. A that poorly, was not getting tested right, by hardly anyone. Right. It was a poorly it's a poorly recruited organization, as we are now learning. Yeah, because Dan, but like Dan Mullen coaching again, three straight years would have made the playoff in his first three seasons at a job and gotten fired. Like that is wild to me. But that's a different topic. <laughs> <laughs> All right, how about Georgia? I think this is an easy number to set. Twelve and zero. 12 and 0 dude well basically yeah let's run down the schedule real quick no why what's the point (laughs) ut martin at home loss ball state loss at home south carolina at home uab at jesus christ it's terrible it's terrible at auburn versus kentucky at home at vanderbilt which will be a home game for them even uh florida and jacksonville (laughs) missouri at home Ole miss at home at tennessee and at georgia tech over under 11 and a half. I think that has to be the number. Oh, over. I mean, the only game that they – Florida's a weird game because weird things happen. It's like the Iron Bowl. Weird things happen in that game. Both teams get up like crazy. Mm-hmm. But no chance. Um, Tennessee's really the only one that scares you. And that and that has to be – Joe Milton has to hit. He has to be great. The offense, the the new – like, there's a, their Tennessee could be very dangerous, that, that road game. But – what game on that schedule is Georgia going to be less than like a seventeen point favorite? Like they they are going to be a two touchdown favorite in every game they play, with the exception of maybe Tennessee, mm-hmm. and maybe that one is nine or ten points. Maybe that's a single digit spread. Maybe. So I I would I'll go twelve and zero. They're, they're, I don't, they don't lose the game. I, I mean, let me ask we you. We don't this. even know the coordinator is or, the, or who the quarterback's going to be, and it's like I'm not. I don't care. Does Kirby want some close games? Because I, I feel like he almost would want some for uh, – because if you just coast through this thing – I made the argument the other day that, uh, you know, they we could, they could be going into Tennessee and not know what they got at quarterback, basically. Yeah, I think you I think I heard you talking about that. Um, basically, you get into a playoff situation, you don't know what you have at quarterback. You've right. gone 12-0. and 0. And I do think you're right that Tennessee on the road, Neyland, depends on how good Tennessee is. If Tennessee slips up a few times – there's going to be a lot less expectations on that that game, um, but if it's 
if they're nine and one, or I don't know what the record would be at that time, like eight and one, maybe. I don't know how many games. It's pretty late in the year. Um, I don't know what Tennessee's number. Whatever. If they if they're a one, if Tennessee's a one loss team going into that game, and Joe Milton's playing well, holy shit, <laughs> that's, gonna, <laughs> that's gonna be a that's gonna be a big time situation. Nealon's gonna be crazy. Um, they could score. I just don't think they're good enough to be. Like, I I agree. You probably want the test for your quarterback, but like, also, if you're just if you're throwing the ball in the first half against teams like South Carolina and Kentucky and Florida, Missouri, even like these are not Missouri's really good on defense. Like, these are not terrible football teams. Yeah, right. They're, they're, in any other conference, they're pretty good football teams. So I think he's tested. I think whoever wins the job is is plus you're practicing against Georgia's defense. <laughs> so so you're probably tested in practice pretty hard as well. Yep. Um. Even the the third stringers. So I I don't buy. I don't subscribe. I think it's a good question. I don't think I am not concerned about it. I think they're too good everywhere else. Yeah. Like all you need is a is a, all you need is Joe Tarashinsky. And and they're twelve. Who's, who the hell's that? <laughs> Who's Joe Tarashinsky? I don't I don't remember that guy. Jo- starting quarterback for the Georgia Bulldogs. Uh, under Mark Richt, I think he gave way to Matt Stafford, I believe. I want to say, but Joe Tereshinsky won the job. I think it was after David Green, after Quincy Carter, maybe or something like that. And he was just like a placeholder. Yeah. Um. But all you need is a like. Was he any? Was he any? Uh, not, not a high recruit. Not what a what about Grayson Lambert? Remember Grayson that? Lambert from yeah, Virginia. I remember that guy. Yeah. <laughs> First of all, I love Kirby Smart quarterback controversies. They're so much fun. Because, like, he kind of like Jimbo Fisher, like, he can't get out of the way of him. And I think there's, like, some weird mental, like, genius to that. Like, Kirby wanted – he could – the Justin Fields, Jake Fromm thing, the JT Daniels, Stetson Bennett thing. Mm-hmm. Like, now he's got three guys. One of them's got to transfer. If he does, Whoever's third place, you know, whichever whichever Georgia Laxboro doesn't win the job, Gunner, Brock, or <laughs> Stetson, or well. Carson <laughs> – like somebody's going to transfer. I don't know. I've heard you say that. I've heard a lot of people say that. I'm not convinced of it. it may, I mean, it maybe. I just think. Car- I mean, Carson Beck could be one and done. I mean, that's that's a leap because we've not even really seen him. You mean uh, you mean start one season and then and jump then to the done. NFL? Yeah, sure. Uh, Gunner is a huge Mike Bobo guy, so I think he'll stay. So maybe I mean Brock Vandergriff maybe, if, but if Gunner Stockton is clearly third on the depth chart by a mile, now they won't say any of this. He's only in his red shirt freshman right. year though. It, they want to keep as many guys now coaches it's it's in their best interest to keep competitions at every position because you don't want guys to transfer at any position right so you're never going to name a starter um i i appreciate when a coach makes it pretty obvious to a player because it gives the player the best opportunity to do what's best for them Mm -hmm. i would hope that in closed door meetings mike bobo and kirby smart are telling whoever's third that they're clearly third going into fall camp like i I would hope that just out of out of courtesy i hope they would do that and if they do that georgia courtesy yeah valid but like, do you care about your kids? Like, I, I, yeah. and I think Kirby does. Like, I think he does. So, uh, just get him to slow down in, on the interstate. You know, like Jesus. Like, but let, but Georgia have let's say I'm Brock Vandegriff an and Carson is ahead of me. I mean, how many times? I mean, I, I, I realize I'm, I'm kind of. This is not the way college football is anymore. But who knows? Maybe Carson is is miles ahead of you in fall camp. You get it in the season, and he shits the bed halfway through the season. Oh, I think that's Brock- the way I'd be looking at it. Like. You know, no, I, I'm, I'm, I think Brock is. The, I, that's what I'm saying. I think the third guy is the one who. Oh, I, okay. I, I, if I'm Connor Stockton and I'm clearly third, yeah, I would hope that I know and that the coaching staff makes it clear that I'm clearly third. And at that point, that's when you transfer. But if I'm Brock Vandergriff, who I think is the the, the 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 battle with Carson, I think it's Carson and Brock that are battling to start this year, and it's close. Yeah, there's no reason to transfer. Like same thing with Jalen Milrow at Alabama. Like why, mm-hmm. if, even if you're battling with Ty Simpson and you barely lose the job, it's still important. Like you could still get reps because I would tell now, those Ty's guys. Now young, Ty's younger though. Like he could start for three years, whereas to right. your point, Carson could be a one and done guy, and that's when if you're Vandergriff, you go okay. See, I would tell I'll those guys not that they'd ever listen to me, but I tell those guys, where are you going to go? That's better than the backup at Alabama. Well, you want you're to, a play away. True, but there's only one football, and guys you, get hurt all the time, man. I, I mean, I agree. You're, I mean, I agree with you. I, you're not. You know, is, is I'm, the not, starter at UAB? Well, I, I wouldn't even think it'd be that good. It'd be like... Oh, no, I think you'd go better. I think you'd be even better than UAB. But look, almost, I think it's 40% of Power 5 schools have a transfer quarterback that's going to start this year, probably. Mm-hmm. Like, you can go play... You, you but go, the time, if you're going to do that, the time is, is already passed. you got to be no, in there for the next, spring, no, I feel like. It's the next window. I think the next window is when 
I would hope coming out of spring practice that, that the guy who's third at Georgia understands that he's third as told to him by the coaching staff. I, that's the yeah. right thing to do. And the right thing to do is to tell the guy that you're clearly third. And if you're then clearly third, you have a decision to make yeah. as a young person. Do I stick it out at Georgia and maybe get like a third national championship ring as a third stringer running the scout team? Or do I want to go start for Wake Forest and run Dave Clawson's offense and win nine games in the ACC? That That's not a decision you and I right, have right. ever faced. We don't know what goes through kids' heads when they do make those decisions. But Well, when you put it like that, that sounds pretty attractive. Right. <laughs> I mean, like right now, 60%, like 50, 60% of quarterbacks in the Power Five are transfers. Yeah. I mean, Kentucky's bringing a guy in from NC State. Like, it, mm-hmm. this is Jaden Daniels is a transfer. Three guys at Ole Miss are transfers. Right, right. Like, they're transfers everywhere, and it's because there's only one football, and you got to start. So, yeah. I, th- we're, we're off on a tangent here, but, like, I don't know if it matters. I think your ultimate question about the quarterback and does Kirby want him tested or who's best or who's good or who's got the most upside or all this stuff, it does come down to if the guy is good, they're probably going to win a third national championship. Mm. If the guy is not – and he's just an average quarterback. They're still probably going to go twelve and zero. Yeah. But then they then they're 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 vulnerable in the SEC championship game at Tennessee, vulnerable in the playoff. But I, I mean, Jake Fromm almost won a national championship. Yeah. Because of Georgia's depth and quality, like that's where Kirby is now, dude. Like, and three straight is unprecedented. It's unprecedented in the modern era of college football. So they're doing trying to for something special this year, which I think, again, with that schedule, <laughs> right, right, twelve and zero is where they're going to be. All right. How about Kentucky? This this. Could yeah, this go. It's a tough one, man. Wild, wild, uh, you know, variations here. Ball State at home, Eastern Kentucky at home, Akron at home, at Vanderbilt, Florida at home, at Georgia, Missouri at home, Tennessee at home, at Mississippi State, Alabama. At, at least you're getting them at home. <laughs> yeah, that's the bad. That's the bad one. <laughs> at South Carolina and at Louisville, seven and a half is what I got for Kentucky. Oh man. I love and remember. I mean, they win ten games now. They're disappointed. It's wild. They've won ten games twice in the last few years. Um, I also really believe in Stoops. I really believe in the defense. I think they fix a lot of problems, which is ironic because you're losing a probably a first round draft pick at quarterback. Mm-hmm. But De- Devin Leary two years ago, thirty five touchdowns, five interceptions for NC State. He he's a really good fit for what Liam Cohen wants to do. Who I think is. A vat, like if you look at the yards per play on offense for Kentucky, yeah, over the last like six years, there's one that stands out <laughs> <laughs> like a full yard per play better than everybody else yeah. ever. And like it was the year Liam Cohen was there, they have great receivers, they've got really good weapons, they got a, a they've got a massive defensive line. Mm-hmm. Um, they're gonna run a lot more tempo and a lot more spread, which I think Leary's pretty good at. I, I, I'm curious about how that all fits with his skill set, he's more of a pocket guy. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I would go under seven. And, my instinct is to go under seven and a half to take them at seven and five, mm. because the schedule is so hard. Just because the, the games are tough. Like, yeah. T- if if you subbed out Alabama for Auburn, I'd go over that, in a heartbeat. I think that's I think that's fair. I mean, it sounds like you're just taking over for everybody. I somebody's got to lose games here. Right. I. I'm an over guy in the off season. I I believe in Kentucky foundationally mm-hmm. kind of like brian kelly at lsu i just believe in him but the, it's the, it's always the upside question with kentucky like what's your upside against the best teams and now tennessee's much better that's a tougher game although mark stoops couldn't beat jeremy pruitt either so <laughs> uh, which is <laughs> strange um because jeremy pruitt sucks at coaching <laughs> football um I, I, that's a tough one, dude. I, I, Kentucky is one of the most interesting teams in the league this year. Yeah, they're they're utterly fascinating. Where where you're taking the over? I think I am. Yeah, on Kentucky. You, so I think they'll wins. surprise. So eight wins. At least one team. I. They got a chip. When, when we disrespect them, that's when they show up the best. Yeah, that's a lot of teams in this league. It sounds like. Um, I could buy into eight and four pretty easily. That one, I honestly, I know I'm supposed to have a take here, but I can't. It's a, this is. My gut instinct was to go under seven and a half when you first said it. But mm-hmm. you kind of t- like, I feel like you've talked me into <laughs> eight and four. I, if, if Florida craters, they're going to provide some extra wins to people. If South Carolina takes a step back, they could provide some extra wins to people. But South Carolina is in a better situation going into this year than either of the last two years. Mm-hmm. But they kind of done it with with special teams and Beamer Ball and like great clock management and and I don't know if that changes. So I don't I don't know if they take a step. It's just this is the East is just as fascinating as the West. It, it's Georgia one 
and then everybody else is basically even. And you know who else is might be a huge factor in all this? Missouri is a huge factor in all these win loss totals. Well, let's talk Missouri let's then. Get to Missouri schedule. I am fascinated by Missouri. South Dakota at home, Middle Tennessee at home, Kansas State at home, Memphis. That's in St. Louis, but still, you should have a home field there. At Vanderbilt, LSU they could at be home, five and zero going to the LSU game. Yep, at Kentucky. South Carolina at home, which you beat last year on the road. Mm -hmm. At Georgia, you gave Georgia as a, a good a game as anybody. Tennessee at home, Florida at home, at Arkansas. Dude, there are a lot of winnable games on that schedule for Missouri. I'm setting the over-under, and I already know where you're going to go with this one. Six. Over. I think I think that's where Vegas will set over. it. Over. Over. I mean, there's some talk. Drake could be fired. Over. I ain't buying it. They just gave him an extension. I don't know why they did that, but they did. Oh, <laughs> because well, they're not worth the they're not worth the paper they're printed on. Um, <laughs> it's just for the it's for the headline in the PR. Yeah, um, I'm going over though. I think Missouri is sneaky dangerous. Second most returning production yep, in the SEC. A and M number one. If they <laughs> let let's say they strike at quarterback, which is that's that's taking a big assumption. But I love Kirby Moore, the offensive coordinator. I think it'll be a major upgrade. It, dude, it, Missouri and A and M are like parallels. Different level of recruit. Texas A&M fans just got so mad. But they're no, it's just the storyline. Oh, like, okay. Okay. Uh, head, head coach. That was Braden that said it. Head coach at Braden Goal. Head coach who's got an offensive background as developing quarter, quarterbacks, but hasn't been able to do it. Mm -hmm. Finally, turns over the reins to an offensive coordinator. Yeah. Exact same story. Second, Neither one of them have ever done that before. Number one most returning production in their division mm -hmm. for both teams. A&M's number one in the conference, and Missouri's number one, number two in the conference, and number one in the East. Yep. They, they have a young returning quarterback who got starting experience last year. I'm just saying the parallels are very similar. Yeah, yeah. And and a lot of winnable a lot of winnable games for Missouri. There's a lot of games in, in there where you don't think about it, and all of a sudden Tennessee at Missouri is like a seven-point spread. Missouri's at home as a six-and-a-half-point underdog. That's a winnable game all of a sudden. Yep. Now, Missouri historically has not been good against Tennessee, but like they've historically beaten Florida in really weird games. They've played Kentucky extremely close. They beat South Carolina last year. Like, I, I think this is a dangerous team. This is an eight-win team, potentially, if all things break right. Quarterback position is the biggest question. Mm -hmm. If Brady Cook is fully healthy, he's a little bit more mobile than people think. Like Sam Horn's pretty solid. Jake Garcia's a good quality transfer. They've got options in that position. they got weapons everywhere. The defense is loaded. I, I mean, they, I they, got... hit, they hit gold with, with uh, Baker, the coordinator. Yeah. Uh, like, they fixed their defense in one year. They were one of the best defenses in the league last year. They're, that is a good football team, and there's a lot of winnable games on that schedule. And I, did, I didn't like Brady Cook last year, but then it, I, you know, you come to find out he was injured, and it's like, well, well, how right. the hell do you evaluate him then? You know what right. I mean? And, and again, and he got better. Ran, as the ran the ball like crazy too. Like, yep, sneaky athletic. So uh, that is a you, you hand over play calling, which Drinkwitz is doing much smoother than Jimbo Fisher. Uh, you got a lot of weapons on that team. Yep. Off, like it's there's a lot to like about Missouri. I'm going over, and, and, it, and I feel pretty good about it. I don't know. This is a team you hate, the South Carolina Gamecocks. Here, <laughs> tricky schedule yeah, right I out the I gate. Can't get out of that one. Can <laughs> I? North Carolina. It's in Charlotte. Tricky game. Ooh, they got they got a bad history in Charlotte outside of the last time they were there. Furman at home, at Georgia, Oof, Mississippi bad. State at home. Tricky game. If you start one and three, the wheels could come off. At Tennessee, revenge one game. And four. Tennessee is going to smoke that ass. I'm just telling you. Florida at home, at Missouri, at A and M. You beat they beat Florida. Jacksonville State, Vanderbilt at home, Kentucky at home. All winnable too. Clemson at home. I've got uh, the over under for the South Carolina Gamecocks, eight. Under. Why do you hate Shane Beamer? I know. I know. I just I I it. He's a very punchable face. Um, no, I'm at Braden Gall. No, I don't hate Shane. I don't hate Shane Beamer. I just, we had a whole episode last week about South Carolina fans like still hating me for thinking that I hate South Carolina. I love South Carolina. I've got nothing. I don't like mustard based barbecue. I think that's stupid. Yeah, but I think everything else about South Carolina. I love the state of South Carolina. It's a great state. I love the low country. Um, I, I just, which I know is not Columbia, but like I. But they have started slow every year under Beamer. Dude, now, and I, I've been to Lee. That's only two years, so maybe that's not well, fair. Well, and they've and they've situationally, and this is the thing. Like they are so good, and we learned this last week on the show. Part of what's what has made they're great on special teams, which is Beamer ball, of course. Yeah. But they are great in game. They like Shane Beamer is for all the weird memes of him cheering when he's down twenty eight to nothing. He is great at man. They are great at managing the situations and 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 clock management. When to when to use like 
I don't know what the offense is going to look like. I don't know if you get consistency out of Spencer Rattler. They've got really good weapons in the air around him. So if the offense mm-hmm. is simplified the way it was last year in the second half, maybe they can make some strides. Um, but Being I, unable to stop the run is an issue. That that the defense is in this conference a, a question. You know? um, my question about South Carolina is really based on is is the team built foundationally on all these things that we love about good teams, right? Just like like a, like Iowa football. Just cons- oh god, don't compare like, them to Iowa. No, I just mean from a well coached like <laughs> okay. discipline. Oh, yeah, yeah. They never do anything wrong. Like they do everything right. They they they're great. They're great in all three phases. Like they don't make mistakes. They on force third you down. To, to to make the mistake. Right, and like when you play that, is that what Shane Beamer has done to South Carolina? I think there's a chance he has. But can you? But that's kind of what you got to do when you're building it up, right. right? But can you can you continue to take steps and yeah. get to nine, ten wins and compete with the top teams in the conference with just that? Right. The recruiting's coming around, but I think it takes time for that. I think I think this is one of those teams where we've talked a lot on both these episodes where if the team feels disrespected, they come out and they play well. I think South Carolina is going to face expectations this year. Yeah. And that's a different place for them to be in. And how do they handle that with, again, a roster that is not all that much better than last year? Um, it, it's almost exclusively tied to Spencer Rattler hitting his ceiling. If Spencer Rattler realizes his potential, yeah. they got great tight ends, they got great receivers. Uh, to carry on, Joiner is going to be used in a bunch of different ways. Like they're going to be fun to watch. Uh, Dow Loggins was the head coach or the coordinator for the Tennessee Titans. He's kind of like a, I don't want to say a punchline with Tennessee Titans fans, but like he's, they kind of laugh. Like when they, when, when Tennessee Titans fans rattle off all their woes at offensive coordinator, he's on the list. Yeah. Um, but college football is so much easier so for a coordinator. And you've got Rattler. So, I, so is it overly simplistic? I mean, guys like you and I, we need something to talk about all off season. But is it as far as Spencer Rattler can take him and, and having I think so. confidence in yeah. him? Because I know you hate him. <laughs> um, but uh, I, think I don't hate good. him. I think, he, I think he's a fine player. I just don't think he's consistent. I, I mean, again, he – I think he's got potential, and if in the right system with the right pieces, like some of those games for South Carolina, like Florida at home, um, and I don't have a schedule for me. I'm not looking at it, but like you've got, you know, Missouri. That's a tough defense, but a winnable game. Yeah. Um, Clemson, I think, is going to be much better this year, which on offense in particular. Um, I think they, I think getting Garrett Riley to come coach their offense with. Cade Klubnik is a big step forward. We don't Clemson. we don't talk good on about. Cl- oh That's wait, fine. this is your show, right? Yeah, we can we can, we say, can do it on your show. Can we wait, say we negative? Can we say negative things about Dabo but positive things about Clemson? Can we do that? <laughs> I never. You'll never catch me saying anything good about him. But no, you I, can go for it. No, I don't. I mean, Dabo's a fine coach. He's fine. I think he's fine. <laughs> like, he's, he's, Jesus, is there? A man? I know. <laughs> um, my favorite my favorite quote of all time, though, maybe in the history of college football, because Dabo Sweeney and Mike Gundy at Oklahoma State have really reached like yelling at clouds on the front porch oh, yeah. status. Yep. Like just two old cranky white dudes, <laughs> and I, I think Dabo like my, fa- well we've been in the name, image, and likeness business for, for thirty years. The name, image, and likeness of Jesus Christ. <laughs> I just think it's it's the most Ooh. Dabo Sweeney thing ever in the history of the world. Anyway, hired a really good coordinator, and they've got a, a good quarterback now. I think Clemson's better. Yeah. So there's winnable games for South Carolina, but there's a lot of losable games for South Carolina. Yep. And it all depends on how the quarter, like when the quarterback played great. Against Tennessee, played his best game of his career, they won. Yeah. And when the quarterback doesn't play great, they get smoked by Florida. Yep. A bad Florida team. So it is not about like insulting Spencer Rattler. It's just like, dude, he's got to be consistent. And if he plays his best football, they can win a lot of these 50 50 games and probably hit the over, probably get to eight wins. Yep. And and be good. But to suggest that South Carolina fans know that that's going to happen or that I, you or I know that that's going to happen is, is kind of silly to me. So, I love you, South Carolina fans. You guys are awesome. You guys are great. Great game day atmosphere. Great state. I love everything about it. My brothers live in Charleston. I vacation in South Carolina. <laughs> I, I, there's no hate, man. Nothing, nothing's happened to me. No, no ill will on Twitter. Like nothing. I just, I just honestly think there's consistency questions with your quarterback. That's all. Yeah, yeah. And if he's really consistent, they'll be pretty good. Now let's move on to. T- we can't talk South Carolina about Tennessee, yep. Virginia. In Nashville, I don't know why the hell they're playing that game in Nashville. Austin P at home, money, dude. At money. Florida, UTSA at home, 
That's, South that, Carolina. That UTSA game is way trickier than people think. Get the hell out of here. South Carolina at home, A&M at home, at Bama, at Kentucky, mm. UConn at home, mm. at Missouri, Georgia at home, Vanderbilt at home. Give me the homer. Give me the homer over under. Eight and a half for Tennessee, I think, is where it's going to be That's set. That's a good number, actually. I agree with you on that one. Um, I don't know how you they don't take a step back. I just don't. I just. I, I don't understand. You damn. <laughs> Why do you hate Joe Miller? I, I don't understand how they don't take you. You cannot have the most efficient season in the history of Tennessee quarterbacking better than Peyton Manning and expect to be as good. Better remove, overall roster. Remove that. Coaching um, continuity. They lost their coordinator. I don't, I mean. Yeah, he was coordinator in name. Defensive coordinator is, Tim Banks is okay. He's nothing special. Um, I think LSU, Kentucky, they're gonna, Pitt. They would all say differently, Braden. <laughs> um, I don't know. The third string quarterback for Pitt seemed to do pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> That's only because they knocked out the uh, the other one. Yeah, and couldn't stop the third stringer. Um, I think Texas A and M is going to beat them. I think A and M is going to beat. I think them. that's a top fifteen matchup that people yep. don't realize is yep. going to be. I think they're going to lose that game, and it's because I'll be there, and my daughter will be, uh, <laughs> and it's because I'm taking my daughter to her first Neyland Stadium experience. That of course they're going to lose to Texas A and M. Yeah, um, that's during Metro National Schools fall break, so perfect time to take her up to Neyland and be- teach her about being disappointed. Um, so you're smashing the under. It sounds like no. I actually think nine and three is about right, but I think Bama and Georgia lose. I think they lose to Bama and Georgia. So the question is, if they lose those two and then lose. If I think I think eight and eight and four is probably what my final prediction will be for Tennessee, mm-hmm. um, and it's not anything about Tennessee actually. It's more about the ecosystem around them. It is Texas A&M is better. Kentucky is going to be better. South Carolina is going to be as good. Missouri could be better. Like it's all about everyone else around them. Even Vanderbilt has shown lots of progress in the last two years. So it's more about what's happening around Tennessee. Yeah. I agree that the roster overall is slightly better, but all those recruits that they got on the defensive line, they're not going to affect the game this year. They, they got a, one of the best defensive line classes in school history. Those guys aren't going to start this year. If one guy is in the regular rotation as a true freshman, that is a successful class. Yeah. Two years from now, they'll all be starting, and they could be damn good. I think that's the year you target. Nico's sophomore season with the next top two or three classes stacked on top of each other in Heupel's fourth year, that's the year. That they and that they could beat Georgia, they get Bama at home that year, and they could win the division. I don't think they're there yet, and mm. I don't think I, much like with Spencer Rattler, Joe Milton has never been a starting quarterback. He's never started a season in his life. He's been given lots of chances. It's certainly possible that he could have his best career this best season this year. He probably will. I think he should be the starter. I don't think Nico's ready yet, but at the same time, it's not it's not fair to him to expect Hendon Hooker production. Mm-hmm. Also, without Jalen Hyatt and Cedric Tillman and Darnell Wright, like it's just not. I know they fill some gaps, and McCoy and Squirrel are very good, but like I just don't think it's fair to Joe Milton to expect Hendon Hooker production. I just don't think that's fair. So, I do think it's between eight and nine. So I think they're good. I think they're dangerous. Um, I don't feel good about that. Pick, this, this is the last time I'm doing your damn show. Okay, sorry. All right, Vanderbilt. Last but not least, <laughs> Hawaii. What do you do? You t- you hammering the? Oh, you think? They're oh, be, yeah. You think they'd be ten and two? Yep. Probably okay. or or nine. Bottle of whiskey. Ten, ten and two. How about this? <laughs> ten, ten wins for you. Eight wins for me. Uh huh. If they hit nine, we push and nothing happens. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if they hit ten, I owe you a bottle of whiskey. If they hit eight, you you owe me a bottle of whiskey. Sound good? Oh yeah, I'll I'll take free booze anytime. All right, All right Vanderbilt, Hawaii <laughs> at home. I'm gonna call you. With, I'm gonna call you from Neyland Stadium, <laughs> walking out when they've lost A and M, and be like. They've already got. They already <laughs> lost to Florida, dude. <laughs> Alabama A and M at home at Wake Forest at UNLV, Kentucky at home, Missouri at home at Florida, Georgia at home at Ole Miss, Auburn at home at South Carolina and at Tennessee. I got the over under for the Commodores three and a half. I'll I'll go over on that one. I think so too. I'll go over on that one. I Vanderbilt think, always getting disrespected. They're getting better and better. I one of the bets I actually had money on last year. I hammered the over. I think it was it started like one and a half, and then it went to two and a half at the start of the season. And I think I, 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 I think one of my biggest bets last year was over two and a half for Vanderbilt. I got to five. Yeah. Um. So I, the, I mean, AJ Swan, I think is a really talented player. Yeah. They've got some continuity on the coaching staff. They are slowly building. I will take the over on that. I don't know what games they win in the conference. Like, 
as we just talked about, like there's a lot of winnable games in there where you can get maybe you get Missouri or Kentucky at home. Yeah. But like those are also teams we just talked about as being pretty good. Yeah. We both like Kentucky and Missouri. So South Carolina, Tennessee, like where are they going to they're going to have to pull some upsets uh, in the conference. I think if they go two and six in the league, I think that's a successful year. Yep. And if you can get three wins in non-conference, uh, you hit, you hit, again, five and seven, I think is, is good. I think that's a good season for Vanderbilt. So, um, I know they want to take a step and get to a bowl, but I don't know if they're there yet. Um, but continuity quarterback play, it's, there's, there's things to be optimistic about for Vanderbilt. So no doubt. Well, Braden, I, I got to jump off here. So I appreciate you yeah. coming in, even though this is your show, this is my show, it's your show, you came in here. <laughs> I did. Well, you were gracious enough to give me some content as well, so we appreciate that. Uh, tell everybody where you can, where everybody can find you and your work and your show and the YouTube page and all that good stuff. Yeah, that SEC podcast. Just search that out. We even got the website that SEC podcast available on all podcasting platforms, YouTube, or search me SEC Mike. I, sh- I should be the only one. There's probably imitators yep. by now, but I- I'm the real one. You're the real one. And uh, if you want to listen to that other SEC podcast, uh, Fringe Element, I might just change the name from Fringe Element <laughs> to that other SEC podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and, we, and we can just we can just figure out uh, what to do with the, the trademark rights uh, somewhere down the road. Uh, no, thank you. Uh, all, always a pleasure to come in and hang out with you. Uh, if you want to listen to the West version, uh, our conversation on the West, go check it out all over the those platforms that you just mentioned. Um, that SEC podcast, Michael Bratton, everybody. My name is Braden Gall. Thanks for listening. This has been a special edition of Fringe Element right here on the 440 Sports Network.